Welcome back everyone, it's me Matt, and as we open the garage door to this funky little armoured car, we're going to Turkey today. Yes, this vehicle kind of reminds me of a bit of a World War II vibe, you know, like a ferret of some kind or an armoured scout car, and that's kind of what this thing is, but it is a bit of a testament to Turkey's continuing and advanced military engineering for the defence market, and I've done a few videos on Turkish equipment recently, and they really do know how to make some pretty unique and very cool vehicles. I'm going to be doing a lot more videos on Turkish military equipment because I do think that they've found a very good niche for their markets. You know, they find things and gaps where the big defense contractors haven't quite filled. And this is kind of one of those gaps, I think, that most defense contractors haven't really looked at. You know, a little scout armored car that isn't over the top, not super high tech, but has all the features that give you a really good reconnaissance platform with a little bit of punch. Today, we're talking about the Otakar Akrep 2. And this is the new generation armored vehicle designed to meet the multifaceted demands of reconnaissance in modern warfare. The name Akrep, meaning scorpion in Turkish, signifies, I would say, its agility and its sting in combat scenarios. It certainly is a little mobile platform could go all over the place cross country. As you can see, it kind of side skirts there on the concrete before in some of that footage. And I kind of like this thing. I think that it's probably going to fit to a lot of countries that don't have a huge budget for advanced heavy duty equipment like IFEs like this. Um, but uh, at the end of the day, why would you need it if you have a small military that maybe is just working on counterinsurgency or, you know, environments where you don't need a huge armored platform, this could be something for you. Now, the Akrep 2 was first unveiled at the International Defense Industry Fair in 2019, so it's fairly new, and it was introducing the electric variant at the time, the Akrep 2E. This marked a significant shift towards a more sustainable and stealthy military operation when you're utilizing a reconnaissance vehicle, which I actually think is a big win for this vehicle. It doesn't need a lot of juice, uh, you know, reconnaissance needs to be quiet, and I kind of approve of having an electrical variant of this kind. Main battle tanks in electrical configurations or IFEs, not so much. For a little scout car, armored car like this, yeah, why not? In 2021, the diesel variant, the Akrep 2 Delta, was showcased, highlighting Otakar's commitment to providing more of a diverse powertrain option for militaries that don't really want to just focus on electrical power. And of course, also a hybrid version was planned, which gives the ability to choose either or. And I kind of like the hybrid. I don't think a full e-vehicle is the best way to go for a military platform ever, because you're fully relying upon power. A hybrid would certainly be the way to go, and certainly not to protect the environment. That is not where I'm going with this. And the vehicle is not just a progression from its predecessor, the original Akrep, but really a complete transformation. While the original Akrep served primarily as a light attack vehicle, the Akrep 2 has been reimagined, really, to serve such different roles, whether it be reconnaissance, surveillance, or even fire support with that cannon. Its design reflects lessons learned, though, really, from past conflicts that these vehicles have been involved in, and anticipates more future combat requirements of the smaller niche markets for armored fighting vehicles and armored cars. And its development aligns with Turkey's strategic objective to enhance its indigenous defense capabilities, which they're doing pretty damn good at. By investing in such advanced platforms, Turkey aims to reduce the reliance on foreign military technology and bolster its position in the global defense market. And the Akrep 2 really is exemplifying this vision. It offers that blend of protection, mobility, and a bit of firepower that meets contemporary battlefields demands. And in summary, it's a bit of a leap in their armored vehicle design. It's not trying to go too far into the realm of, you know, heavy duty reconnaissance, but I do feel that this is a little gap that is being filled very well. And there's a lot of interest in this vehicle, which is surprising. It really is. I honestly didn't think it would get as much attention as it would. And it stands out with a very good design, focuses very heavily on functionality and adaptability. They can take that turret off. You can put a new configuration on there. You can reduce its weight. Lots of different ancillaries on there too. Different cameras, different connections for reconnaissance equipment, radar. Um, this thing is very customizable, which is why I think customers are really tailoring to it. Once again, I'm going to use that modular word that really aggravates a lot of you. Modular. It's modular. Yes, people. It's modular. If you're in the comments, make sure you give me a drop to the modular configuration triggering because I know you guys hate me saying modular. Now, at first, you think this thing's quite small, but it's actually quite a little chunky monkey. It measures approximately 5.5 meters in length and 2.5 meters in width and a 1.8 meters in height over the hull. And it maintains a fairly compact profile, ideal for most various operational environments, whether it be going on trains, planes, or being transported by truck. 
The vehicle's gross weight is around about 13 tons, striking a balance between the armor protection and mobility, but it's still pretty beefy at 13 tons. One of the Acrep 2's notable design features is its four-wheel drive system, which, when combined with optional rear axle steering, provides exceptional maneuverability, and this configuration allows the vehicle to basically crab walk and navigate some really interesting terrains, including deep mud, snow, and water obstacles, ensuring its operational effectiveness in a lot of different environments. The independent suspension system with coil springs further enhances its off-road capabilities, offering a very smooth ride even in rough terrains. The vehicle's ground clearance is 400mm, which enables it to overcome a variety of different obstacles, and while its approach and departure angles of around 45 degrees each facilitate efficient navigation over steep inclines and declines, which for the Turkish environment with mountains this is very useful, and if you're putting this vehicle into a scout or reconnaissance you know, configuration, you want it to get to high ground quickly to observe large amounts of battle space, you want a vehicle that can climb nasty inclines, and this certainly can do that. The real interesting thing about this vehicle though is its speed. This thing can achieve a maximum speed of 120 kilometers per hour, allowing for extremely rapid deployment and repositioning on the battlefield. A significant innovation for the Acrep 2 though is also its drive-by-wire system which electronically controls steering, similar to <coughs> the Cybertruck, and has very good acceleration, particularly for the E variant, and also braking. This technology not only reduces mechanical complexity, but also opens up avenues for remote controlling and potential autonomous operations, aligning with a lot of modern military trends and towards unmanned systems. The vehicle's very low profile design minimizes its visual signature, but of course when you're putting that turret on there, you're kind of reducing that. And while all efforts are being pushed to reduce acoustic and thermal signatures, it is really being pushed a little out of its limits with that gun on top of there, but if it didn't have the gun, it's certainly a lot less being able to be seen with the way in which it's set up. Internally, it is designed to accommodate a crew of three, driver, commander, and gunner. The layout ensures that each crew member can perform their duties efficiently with ergonomically placed controls and displays. The vehicle is equipped with an advanced system to enhance situational awareness with cameras and sensors that provide very good comprehensive views around the surroundings of the vehicles. There are so many configurations for this platform, whether it be anti-tank, RWS, command, control. It can basically, once again, be a modular configuration and suit to be tailored to whatever the needs of the battlefield at the time. In essence, the design and the mobility really reflect a harmonious blend of engineering and practical functionality. Of course, though, if you have an armoured car, you're going to want to have it fairly armoured. And the Otakar Akrep 2 is designed with quite an emphasis on survivability, ensuring that crew remains protected even some nasty hostile environments. And with modern combat scenarios, the ability to withstand things like ballistic fire, mines and IEDs is just as critical as the gun that's on top of it. And this is where the vehicle does quite well. The vehicle's armour protection is once again modular, meaning it can be adjusted based on the mission requirements, and can actually be modified in the terms of the way in which the chassis is set up. Whether you want to put heavy duty armour on the front, sides or rear, you can panel it up as you wish to. While the base armour offers protection against small arms fire and shell fragments, additional applique armour kits can be installed to enhance that ballistic resistance against higher calibre rounds, but certainly not anything above 25mm. The vehicle incorporates a V-shaped hull design that helps deflect explosive energy and landmines and IEDs away from the centre of the vehicle, and reducing also the shockwave impact on the crew. Additionally, the seats inside the vehicle are energy absorbing, helping to mitigate the effects of a blast and reducing injuries caused by rapid deceleration forces. It is chemically, biologically, radiological and nuclear chemically protected, and can also be installed if necessary but is not part of the standard package. It also has an automatic fire suppression system inside the crew compartment and engine bay. In case of fire, there is actually a foam system they can install to protect some of the electronic systems without having to absolutely destroy it with the powder, which is starting to step away from suppression systems in vehicles now. Foam is actually the way to go. I'm not sure how effective it is, but the system immediately activates in the signal of the engine bay picking up any fire and is supposed to improve the chances of survival. Situational awareness though is really the key to this vehicle, with the 360 degree camera system similar to that, that you have in the modern pickup trucks where you can kind of see top down, thermal imaging and night vision capabilities allows the crew to detect potential threats from many different angles and even in extremely low visibility conditions. The vehicle's low acoustic thermal and radar signatures make it a lot harder for enemy forces to detect and target by adding that extra layer of stealth based survivability. The biggest 
attribute to this vehicle though is the selection upon powertrain that you may have. The electric, diesel and hydro propulsion systems give flexibilities to making a different type of fleet of vehicles. You want reconnaissance, of course, maybe you'll go heavily on the electric side. You want long-term command posts, you're probably going to go for a diesel or maybe even a hybrid solution. You want something that has a little bit more force, a little bit more armor and that cannon on top of there, you'll probably go with a heavy diesel. And this gives a lot more flexibility, which is something you tend to not see. The electric variant, for instance, is fully electric, including all of the systems that link to it, significantly reducing that thermal and acoustic signatures from things like generating engines to fire up on silent watch. And basically what that means is certain armored fighting vehicles have a small engine beside the main engine that allows it to be quieter, but then allows the operation of the vehicle's electronics to work. In this configuration, it doesn't even need that. There's no thermal. Yes, the batteries are going to be heavier and you're certainly going to add a little bit more weight, but electric vehicles generate less heat overall, reducing infrared detectability and a major advantage in modern warfare, particularly where heat-seeking weapons are prevalent. Moreover, the absence of an internal combustion engine results in quieter operation, less fumes that can be seen from a distance, and making it really hard for enemies, particularly infantry on the ground, to locate the vehicle in tight up reconnaissance missions. However, battery life and recharging logistics are certainly concerns for the Akrep 2E, and the diesel powered variant is giving a very good range of 500 kilometers. But if you don't want a long range reconnaissance vehicle, you just want a little bit of muscle, the Akrep 2 is highly effective also as a fire support vehicle. Its modular turret system allows for customized weapon loadouts including anti-tank missiles, a 25mm autocannon and even a 90mm low pressure gun, making it ideal for engaging light armor or even potentially enemy fortifications. The vehicle is quite well suited for urban warfare operations where maneuverability and rapid response are crucial. Its very small turning radius and crab steering mode enable it to navigate very tight city streets and even smaller bridges, supporting counterinsurgency operations and river crossings. So is the Otakar Agrep 2 a game-changing vehicle? Well, I don't think so, I really don't. In modern warfare, there's so much variance in what you may require for your particular battle space, but those unique powertrain options, that modular armor capability, the advanced technological features in reconnaissance, and its future-proofing in terms of modularity give it a fairly sustainable platform for the future, and as nations look for more agility and versatility and particularly technologically superior armored vehicles, I would say the Akrep 2 is certainly generating a lot of interest among military forces worldwide for a platform that's cheap. They're not extremely expensive, and with its ongoing improvements, including autonomous capabilities, it could set to become a bit of a cornerstone of some of the next generation unmanned reconnaissance and rapid response units. Something that you don't mind sending into combat, it getting taken out, and you could probably put 10 more into the battle space without spending your entire defense budget on doing so. So that wraps up our detailed look at the Otakar Akrep 2. This vehicle, though, isn't just another armored car. I do think it's a bit of a glimpse into what potentially future smaller armored combat vehicles may be and that autonomous setting. And if you did enjoy today's video, I'd love for you to give me some comments, give me some feedback. What do you think about this little vehicle? And of course, if you did enjoy today's video or dislike it, please click that little thumb button. It really, really does help. Some of you have been sending super chats, um, which is a new feature recently for me and YouTube that I've been noticing uh, in financial support to my channel. I cannot thank you enough. That it really does mean a lot. As I tell many of you in the past, though, keep your money. I appreciate you just stopping by on the channel. Uh, YouTube is a weird platform sometimes, but I really do appreciate you all stopping by and I hope to see you on the next video. If you want to see more vehicles and more military equipment on my channel, let me know what you want to see next. Put it in the comment section and I'll see you next time. All the best folks. Bye-bye.